Hey students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. In the last video, you looked at different types of maps that geographers use. And in this video, you're going to learn why mapping is such an important part of geography. Here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these over, and get ready to look for the answers as you watch. So in the last video, you learned how thematic maps show the way that a variable is distributed in space. For example, the variable in this map here is the number of McDonald's. And by mapping this variable, we can easily see where McDonald's restaurants are distributed throughout the world. Now let's say that we want to dig deeper. And instead of just which countries, instead of knowing which countries have a lot of McDonald's, I want to know why there are lots of McDonald's in those countries. Or maybe I'd like to know what some possible effects are of a country having so many McDonald's. To answer those other questions, I'm going to map other variables, and then I'm gonna compare those maps to this map of the McDonald's locations. When we compare two maps of different variables, we're looking for something called spatial association. Spatial association is the degree to which two variables are distributed similarly in space. If two variables have a high degree of spatial association, they tend to occur in the same places. A high degree of spatial association also suggests, although it doesn't necessarily prove, that the two variables are correlated somehow. Perhaps one is causing the other. I say suggests because correlation does not always mean causation. On the other hand, if two variables have low spatial association, they don't occur in the same place, and they are less likely to be correlated. Let's look at some examples. Here is our map of McDonald's again, and I want to compare it to another map per capita income by country. So we're going to compare these two maps. What I'm asking is, is it possible that the number of McDonald's locations in a country is somehow related to the country's wealth? Perhaps wealthier countries have more McDonald's because the population can afford to buy food instead of cooking their own food. So that's my hypothesis, that somehow wealthy countries have more McDonald's. Let's test it out by comparing these maps. So remember, in the map on the right, the darker the blue, the wealthier the country, and in the map on the left, the larger the circle, the more McDonald's. I would say that these two variables, number of McDonald's and per capita income, have a high degree of spatial association. I see a lot of McDonald's in the US, and I see that the US is a wealthy country. I see many McDonald's in Australia. Australia is a wealthy country. I see many McDonald's clustered in Europe. Europe has many wealthy countries in it. So my hypothesis that the wealthier countries have more McDonald's because people there have more money to eat out is not necessarily true, and I should do more research on it, but these two maps definitely support it. All right, let's look at low spatial association. If two variables have low spatial association, then they are not found in the same places. Let's compare our map of McDonald's locations to this map of obesity. Is it possible that McDonald's and obesity are correlated? I'm gonna make another hypothesis. Countries that have lots of McDonald's are also countries with lots of obesity because eating McDonald's can make people obese. Let's test out my hypothesis by comparing the two maps. In this map, the darker the red, the higher the percentage of the population that's obese. I do see spatial association in some places like the US. The US has a lot of McDonald's and it has a lot of obesity. But I also see a lot of countries with low or no spatial association, like France here and Brazil. Both of those countries have medium levels of obesity, but they have a lot of McDonald's. 
And then there's countries like Algeria, that's 